In this video, we're gonna talk about the template method pattern as one of the programming patterns. This one is going to be especially useful if you're trying to create some mechanics that have a lot of base functionality, but you may just wanna change one method inside of there to change a small part of your mechanic. A common example that we're going to look at will be the concept of a pickup, where you may want a health pickup, you may want a coin pickup, you know, whatever kind of pickup you want, you don't necessarily want to repeat a lot of the simple detect player code. You want that all to be inherited and self-run, but you do want to change what happens when the thing is actually picked up. So anytime you have a series of things that you always want to do at a base, but you want to change one of the steps that happens, then the template method pattern is going to be a really good solution for you to solve that problem. For the template method pattern, you're gonna typically have a base class that will call some other functionality. You know, you'll run an initial setup method. You, you could do some collider detection and so forth, but one of the steps you don't really want to define. And you can either do this as abstract so that you're not defining it at all, or you can have some base functionality that you can have other things override later on. Um, both ways are fine to, to implement this, this pattern, but the pattern says that you're going to run some things in a sequence and one of the steps in that sequence, you want to change what that does. So in our base class, we'll, we'll have this, but then we may want to make a series of new classes that inherit from our base and we want each one to call a particular step slightly differently. So in our pickup example, one might add coins, one might add health, one might increase speed or, or something. And so the, the core concept is just that we have a series of methods and one of those or more than one of those methods we wanna redefine whenever something inherits from this class. So let's go a step deeper into that. In our base class, we may, let's say on start or whenever it is created, we can run a step. We could, this method could be literally anything. And then we have a step two, and then we have a step three. In our case, we want child objects to be able to change what the step two is. Let's say in a weapon system setup, you could have equip the weapon, set up the weapon, and then this step is um, configure stats or something. And then you may want each of the weapons to configure stats differently or add an ability or, or whatever. The key point here is that we are calling a method that can be overridden, either abstract or virtual in C Sharp, but we want other child classes to be able to change this step of the process. But we want other steps in the process to either not be accessed or not be changed. So we're just defining one step to be modified by child classes. And so we're doing this. Notice in this case, if this is abstract, we are calling, um, I put virtual there, but I'm doing that to show you that you could do either one. Uh, in this case, we would say um, abstract and we would put it at the top and say, okay, something else needs to define what this is. It has no content. We want something else to give it content. Um, if you just want to, to override some base functionality, you just put the method down here, label it virtual, and then override it that way. And so in our child classes, we'd say override step two. And we are now hooking in to this step two and saying, don't do that, do this custom behavior. And then we can add whatever custom behavior for each kind of child class we wanna do. Again, these could be enemies, they could be weapons, they could be anything with some kind of variation that you wanna change something in part of a series of steps. And lastly, just to give some context of the example that we're gonna look at before you just see a giant scene filled with scripts, the overall view of what this is going to look like, we're gonna have our pickup base, which is going to be our base class for our pickup mechanic. And in here, we are, we're actually going to define this as abstract. So we're gonna say abstract on pickup and then we are going to pass it a reference to the player. And this is just to make it easier for our pickups to um, build a connection between itself and the player. We're gonna do that in the base, that way we don't have to find that connection for all the uh, inheriting classes. And this is also just to show you that you can pass parameters when you're using this, um, this pattern as well. 
So on trigger enter, we're gonna do all of our collider detection. We're going to play our sound effects, play our um, particle effects, and then we are going to call our method that we haven't defined yet and give it the reference to the player. And we're gonna send that along. And now whenever we create new types of pickups, if we inherit from the pickup base, all this stuff is gonna be handled for us, but we just need to define the on pickup. So all, all we need to do to create a health pickup at this point is just say override uh, void on pickup. We already get the player, so we can just say player heal the player, player flip the gravity, player add the coin, and we'll look at other ways to get other components and, and whatnot too. But yeah, this is the pattern, and, and I'm hoping that the layout of this makes sense because I don't want the specific examples and game objects and whatever to confuse it too much. But the core of it is that you have a base, you do a lot of base functionality, but you leave a hookup inside of a method that your child objects can redefine. And you can create a lot of variation with mechanics very easily by using this particular pattern. Now let's look at how we can implement the template method pattern inside of Unity. So first let's see what we have in our scene setup. If I hit play, we can move around and we have three different pickups here. If I collide with that one, it's going to add a coin in the player's inventory. If I collide with this one, we're going to heal the player. And if I collide with this one, we are flipping gravity and flying off into the sky. Now the point here is that we have a pickup base that is doing most of the heavy lifting for all three of these pickups. And we are not repeating code in that. We are just using one class to define all the basic pickup functionality. But in that pickup base, we are defining a method that can be overridden to differentiate what happens when each of these things are picked up. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna to go to my pickup script. Again, I'm, I'm less worried about you being able to get this entire scene set up or the specific code and more about the pattern and, and how you can use this as an example. So in our pickup base, we are doing a lot of setup and we are finding components, we are defining particle prefabs and, and whatever. But the key point here is that we have our on trigger enter and we are doing some detection and then at some point we are calling a method that I'm calling on pickup. Now you'll notice that if I double click on this, it's I'm not defining this anywhere. You could make this a virtual method and you could give it some default behavior and then we could override it. In this case, I've decided to make it an abstract method. Now if I scroll back up to the top, I, I am calling this method here, but I am defining it at the top as abstract meaning that it doesn't really have any body code. It is, just, it is just being called here and saying, if you want to use the pickup class, you need to define what on pickup does. And I'm also sending it a player as a parameter and I'm getting that from the on trigger collider get component and I'm sending it through. You, but you, you could have on pickup not take any parameters, but I just wanted to show you that you could set it up this way. But the point is I've made an abstract method and I'm calling this method down there. And because we have an abstract method, we also have to ha make this whole class abstract, meaning that we have to inherit from it. We can't really instantiate it. So to make that make sense, let's, let's look at our coin example. I'm going to save and over here, we have our coin and on our coin pickup, we have Colliders, we have audio sources and whatnot to get everything working from the base class. But we have a script called coin pickup. If I double click that, coin pickup inherits all the base functionality from pickup. But you remember, we declared this on pickup method, this one right here. We declared that as abstract, which means that we need to define it inside of our coin pickup. Now, in what is this, six lines of code, we are creating all of our functionality needed for our coin pickup, which is we implement our on pickup class, we are receiving the player, which we are getting from the base, and we are running a method on the player. This could be anything. In our case, if we um, highlight player and hit F12, 
it'll take us there, just a handy shortcut. We have defined a method that's public called add coin, and you know, we're just adding a coin to the inventory here. Back, back again. And so that, that's all we're doing. You could have any method on player, you could have add speed, you could have whatever. Um, you could do anything you want here. But the point is we are making something related to the coin pickup working inside of this on pickup method. So that's cool. We could have actually put that inside of the base, but let's look at the real power of our template method pattern. Let's go to our health pickup and we'll look at the script here. Now on our health pickup, again, we have our base set up and our components. Again, a very small script because we are inheriting most of the functionality from pickup. There's no need to copy code if we can just have it all in one place. And inside of our health pickup, again, we need to implement this on pickup method that is being called in the base, but we're going to give it the specifics. And in this case, for the health pickup to work, we're taking the player, we are searching the player for a health component. In our case, if we go back, our player ball does have a health component on it. And on our health component, we have a heal method. I'll show you that, I'll just highlight that, hit F12. We have a heal method. We also have some other methods we could use. Um, point is we have a method that we can call. I'm gonna go back. So we get our player, we test to see if there's a health component. And if there is, we heal the player by a certain amount. Very few lines of code, but we are, we've just created a brand new pickup. Go here and let's look at one more. Um, just to show you, you can make this as expandable as you want very, very quickly. We have our gravity flip pickup. And if you go down to this code, double click, we have our gravity flip pickup. Again, inherits from pickup. And again, F12, we need to define on pickup because it is abstract and we need to define it, we need to receive the player and then we can do whatever we want. Um, also, because you know this is getting called down here, we're doing this all on the base, but we're defining it in the child. So we're gonna go back to our gravity flip pickup and we are overriding our abstract method giving it some body code and receiving the player. And in this case, again, I'm just doing a search. I'm saying player, if the player has a rigid body, then it is using physics and we will just reverse the gravity. You can do whatever you want here and you can make this gravity work however you want, but I have just in very few lines of code created a gravity flip pickup. So hopefully you see by now how easy it is to create lots of different um, variations on a mechanic if you're doing all of the core setup and functionality in the base, but doing the part that is different or unique to this version of the mechanic inside of a inheriting class using the template method pattern. We're letting the child class override one small part of the process or one small part of the functionality and giving it its own definition. In this case, it's adding a coin, or if it's healing the player, or if it's slipping gravity, lots of variation very quickly. So that's just one example of this pattern. Um, the template method pattern is useful anytime you have a series of steps and you want them to happen in a very specific order. You want to determine when they happen in the base, but you want to determine what happens on a particular step inside of a child object. So if you wanna do some foundational setup for any of your classes, but you just want the variations to have a slight difference between them, the template method pattern is an extremely valuable pattern to know about.